Hello everyone, I'm super late on this because I stayed up all night editing the tier list. The Curse of Osiris expansion has been officially announced and teased coming on December 5th for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. PC gets it at the same time time. The expansion will be revolving around Osiris, the infamous warlock of Destiny 1 times, and the Vex. We'll be taking a trip to Mercury to undoubtedly attempt to stop the Vex from doing their weird robot stuff, where a portal of the past and future has been reopened. This does not appear to be a PvP-focused expansion, and I say that because Osiris was linked to Trials of Osiris, which is what Trials of the Nine was called in Destiny 1. The trailer looked pretty cool, some pretty expansive looking environments, nice to go back to Mercury and not just be PvPing on it. The art team, literally anyone involved with any art at all, continues to be fantastic. But speaking of going back, there's quite a few amount of things that lend itself to the past. First of all, the lighthouse will be, quote, a new social space to visit. How it will be accessible is unknown, much like most of the things I'm going to talk about. Next, the clips of Osiris feature him in the Vault of Glass raid from Destiny 1. The Vault of Glass was pretty important to the Vex after all, and him trying to find answers in there seems to make a good amount of sense. Next up, we have a clip of what looks like the Jade Rabbit from Destiny 1, an exotic scout rifle that only very recently came to Xbox because of PS4 exclusivity. What a kick in the balls it would be if it were again locked behind PS4 exclusivity. They have not spoken about that just yet. Right next to Jade Rabbit is a fusion rifle that looks an awful lot like Telesto, also from Destiny 1, and there is some other footage out on the internet that basically confirms this. Speaking of more exotics from Destiny 1, we have a silhouette that kind of looks like Thorn, but this one is much more inconclusive than the other two. A non-Destiny 1 item, we have what appears to be a new trace rifle of a solar variety. It sounded the same as Coldheart. I assume functionality will be close to the same. This could be a situation like we had with Thunderlord, the heavy machine gun from Destiny 1, where we eventually got Thunderlord in the other two elements. Otherwise, we're getting, quote, a new destination to explore, new missions, new strikes, plural, that's actually surprising, new raid content, we'll talk about that in a minute, new free roam activities, so that's probably adventures, a new world quest, and, quote, more. The only thing we have to compare to with expansions of this price point are the year one expansions, Dark Below and House of Wolves. And my guess is that... This will have a pretty similar structure, but based off the wording from the previous paragraph alone, it does seem like this will be the largest of the $20 expansions so far. This is likely because they had a bit more time to develop it compared to Dark Below, which was rumored to be developed in a very short amount of time, as little as nine weeks. They do seem to be a little bit more on the ball compared to Destiny 1. Nine weeks, by the way, is an incredibly short amount of time in game development world. There is also some PvP footage floating around, but I'm not going to show it here out of fear of Activision and Bungie copyright striking my channel, because I don't know if I'm allowed to show it or even talk about it. I'm sure it's already fully detailed on Reddit. I'll post the mega thread link in the description and maybe some other stuff about it too in the description. That is your Curse of Osiris reveal. The trailer is in the description if you have not watched it already. We're going to move to my thoughts now. Oh boy, I can't wait for these comments. So, Destiny 1 Exotics returning. Because we already had Destiny 2 feature Destiny 1 Exotics in the base version of the game, this move does not surprise me in the slightest. Does that mean they still could be holding a secret or two? Absolutely. We don't have a clue until it's actually out. But if you're annoyed at the fact that we're going to be seeing more Destiny 1 exotics return, I can totally see why you're upset. I would much rather have new exotics than old exotics. However, I've been beaten over the head by so many comments and scenarios that I'm just numb to this at this point and sort of don't have an opinion anymore. Now, if you're in the This Is Cut Content from Destiny 2 Sold As DLC party, welcome. I'm sure the group from Destiny 1 will welcome you with open arms. 
Again, I am completely numb. Nothing I say will have an impact on any of your opinions if you are jaded enough to have this opinion in the first place about Destiny or about gaming in general. If I say it's not cut content, then you all just call me a shill, bungee or anyway, so I'm not even gonna bother. I feel like I'm not even allowed to get excited about Destiny stuff anymore, just out of fear. That's why I might seem kinda down in this video. I'm just afraid to say nice things because of the internet. However, after actually getting to know some developers from quite a few amount of games, not just Destiny, I've gotten a greater appreciation for how games are actually made and the effort that goes on behind the scenes. If you want to get mad at anyone for your cut content jadedness, just don't get mad at the individual developers at least. They work way too much to get treated like that. Finally, that wording on the raid, or rather, raid content. I was not expecting a raid with this release, and if they were coming out with a full raid, I feel like this would have been worded as new raid, not new raid content. Does that mean Leviathan's gonna have a new boss or something? Are they just gonna bump up the power levels? Are they gonna change the fights entirely? Is it a new raid, but maybe a really short one? Are they gonna have a three-man endgame piece of content that isn't Prison of Elders, which they said, by the way, is not returning to Destiny 2? I don't know. I, I don't have much insight. I just hope that it's good. Again, the expansion releases on December 5th, 20 bucks, or your regional equivalent. Season Pass gets you both expansions for 35 bucks.